Hey guys, welcome back to the Strange Corner. My name's Bim. I'm Lucas. I'm Benson. I'm Bean. I'm Will. I'm Redbeard. And today we're talking about the slab. Ben, if you don't mind, just taking us through a little bit of um, the lore about the slab. Okay, so I've lived in the same place my whole life, um, and I've had some rough times and some good times, but uh, every time I've gone up to the slab, it's always been a negative thing. Like, it's always been like, oh, this is not a super great place, and I always felt, like, drawn there. Um so I, I, for one, think there's like otherworldly stuff out there, but I don't, I don't know. Like I'm skeptical of, of it sometimes. But shoot, like going up there just never felt right. Like it just it's been burned down years ago when I was like five or six, uh, when it all used to be woods. It's technically private land. It always felt weird. I had a buddy who is no longer with us. He went and up there with me one time and he flipped out and he was like no uh like we gotta pray and get out of here and i was like oh yeah because that's not good why did and he flip I, out i don't know like he just uh he was like we gotta get out of here man it's like he said like a wood prayer or something some kind of like wicca crap or something oh geez and i was like geez that's not good what did the and, building what, what did like what did it used to be I, I didn't see it actually back when it was a place. Um, so there's three houses. There's one that a guy still lives in. One of them got abandoned, and then this one burned to the ground. Uh, I don't know if anybody mm -hmm. died. I was trying to research and find it out, uh, but I could not find anything. Um, but I've always been drawn up there. Uh, a lot of negative negativity up there. You feel the air kind of change because it's out of the way. But, you know, you think it's peaceful, but as soon as it starts falling nighttime. Uh, or it's like pitch black. It's not a good time. Uh, you can just feel the energy shift. It's not good. Um, when I went up there one time, the, one of the first times um, when I was like littler, um, it was unlocked. Like there's a gate and there was a little shack. The gate was unlocked. Um, there was no, you can just waltz right through. Or um, no, I think I was like 12, I think. You could just waltz through and there was a little shack and just looking at the shack, you just get the heebie-jeebies. It's just like that's I'm, that, I'm gonna get raped in that shack. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's what I think when I and, shack yeah, yeah. So straight up, uh, kind of like, shack. hey, partner. Got one and, <laughs> and so, uh, but the next time we went up there, it was chained to the brim. There's no cameras up there. It was how chained long, to the brim. Uh, uh, good, like ten years. Oh wow. Um, yep. Yeah. And uh, like the next time we went up there, it was like a week later. Um, we didn't like, like, we didn't like alert anybody, but like the gates were locked. Like the shack was like straight up boarded up, uh, which was super freaking creepy. Recently right. me and Redbeard went up there and painted and the whole time it just felt strange. Yeah. It's uh, like you could, you could hear background banjo music playing the entire time we were up there. It was kind of <laughs> yeah. terrifying. Did you guys like feel anything just weird up there while you were there? I mean, sort of. It just, it, it didn't feel it like off. It, it didn't feel homely. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess because it's like it just a brick, welcoming. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, it didn't feel like somewhere where I would want to go and hang out if I was like, you know, just chilling in a hammock or anything like that. Like, right. you know, most other places would. It felt like it don't. It don't. It almost felt like something was watching you in a way. It was kind of oh, weird. Yeah. I don't. That, that's just what the vibe that I got. Yeah. It just. I don't know. Someone. Like looking at you from the woods, because it's you're surrounded in an area of wooding, so it's just very kind of off-putting. Man, let me tell you, I got friends that they live near a college research station that's a hundred miles from the college, uh, so they grow like corn and stuff. Anyway, some nights when I leave their house, if I've hung out with them a while, and it's like one o'clock in the morning, it I I run to my truck. It feels like something is watching me. I hate it. Uh, it's spooky dooky, you know, all the all the stuff. Yeah, and then other yeah. nights, you know, I want to take my time, walk to my truck. But no, some nights I like sprint because I am scared. So, a couple uh, points of interest for this place. Um, that being said, uh, as far as running goes, but so let's fast forward from when everything got boarded up to when I was about sixteen. Um, so, two two really spooky things happened. So, there, there are cows in this pasture. That's like where this is, 
and it's not like a super like fieldy area you know there's just cows back there um so i'm 16 and i was walking home from the apartment complex that's next to my neighborhood and i was busy writing in a journal or drawing or something and i look up for like the split a second and i'm at this curb and i look into the woods and these huge i'm talking huge yellow eyes were right there <laughs> like just peeking at me then they turned into the woods and i sprinted my tail as fast as i could i have never ran that fast in my life so i i think I don't know. I, I think there might be something there. Something is drawing people in there. It drew me in there, and I just it's spooky. Like I, I just don't like it. I would especially feel freaked out because I mean, you live in like a pretty populated neighborhood that's not necessarily wooded, all the way. So right. I mean, you see something like that. I mean, yeah, you could say it's a dog, but of course the uh, <laughs> the one part of us, the one part of us, always wants to say, huh? It's definitely something else. So yeah, that's, yeah, talking real. about the the whole eyes thing. So. I know I kind of mentioned this to you earlier uh, today, Ben, but since we've all, it's weird, and I know this is all just maybe a coincidence, I'm not really for sure. Um, last night, so I'm, I'm laying in bed, it's late. Uh -oh. I, no, I, it's so, like, it's weird that this is happening now, because, like, we've, we've all kind of been diving into this kind of, not necessarily, I guess a good time, as, now, now's a good time to kind of mention, like, the this strange corner that we're sitting in right now uh the whole idea behind it is so that we can talk about and find out things that are uh just not normal things that you might uh hear about but you might not necessarily be able to explain um just oddities of of our surrounding areas and kind of things that have happened to us throughout our life so on that same subject last night laying in bed and i start to hear something uh and we're watching Lucifer, so it's already <laughs> kind of like setting it up. But... Setting the mood. <laughs> what <Yeah>. a choice. <laughs> so, That's a really good show. Phenomenal show. Yeah, it's actually on your recommendation that I'm watching it, Bean. Thank so, you. So uh, really, really good show, but we're, we're watching it, and I kind of hear something out of the corner of my ear, not really uh, you know, paying too much attention, and then I hear a little bit more, and then I, I, I pause the show, and there's no sound. My dog's laying in the bed, like right beside us. I was about to say, was your dog? No, Bugging. she's 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 laying there, and I swear, like right down this hallway, the it, the, the other side of this hallway is my bedroom and, and a set of stairs that go downstairs. I swear, I saw eyes in a spot where there shouldn't be eyes, mm -hmm. and it oh. like my heart starts to pound, I'm freaking out, and I don't know what it was. I didn't hear anything or see anything after that. I did get a little bit of a weird feeling going to bed. Um, but I swear, like, I saw something. I even said it uh, to Miranda. I was like, hey, I saw something. And I'm like, my, my chest is pounding. And I don't, I don't know what it was. Never, was... Nothing ever came of it. It's the first experience I've had like that since we've lived in this house. Yeah. Um, but I just I find it odd that we're, we're starting all this stuff up and mm – -hmm. uh, well, you know what you got to do, Lucas. You got to you got to burn it down. Oh. Like that's the only <laughs> that's the only option. Yeah, so, no, I'll help you, like, dude. Got some kerosene <laughs> in the water. So I've had some <laughs> I've had some weird things happen in this room. Uh, so towards this. What's that behind you, Will? I don't wait. We don't What's need that to know. You, Will? What, oh. <gasps> what is that thing? <laughs> <laughs> it's an agent. It's a kick squad uh, agent. Oh my gosh! My internet. <laughs> Out this window is nothing but woods. Now our family. We know we know the people who own the woods, small town, family, friends, you know, stuff like that. So we can do whatever we want to out there. Uh, one night, it was winter break. I was in high school, staying up to like 3 a.m., playing video games, stuff like that. I lay in bed and uh, sitting there trying to fall asleep, and this air conditioner isn't on at all during winter because it gets cold so i just wrap up in a bunch of these blankets you know that's it and i get a space heater uh but i don't cut it on when i sleep because you know that dangerous <laughs> uh so i'm laying here and i and i hear like a coyote which isn't uncommon where i live there's woods i hear coyotes all the time but this is this particular one, or even if it was one, is screeching like it's hurt, dying, and then all of a sudden it stops. Yeah. That's like, hmm, that's a little creepy. Uh, 
And like I've got a dog that's outside, and he was just wild, Dumb. just yeah. But uh, it stopped, and it was. I was like, okay, I can't tell you how far apart these two things happened. I just know, same instance, a winter break, three a.m. or later or earlier, laying in bed, about half asleep. All of a sudden, I hear what sounds like hooves of a horse hooves. right outside my window. Gallop, gallop. I mean, it was like, and I was like, what the hell? And like, I heard more, and I was like, two things are happening. A horse is loose, which, again, small town, but there are no horses around me. Not uncommon, but it'd be a little that odd. Like hey, hey, let me ask. Coyote. Let me let me ask you a question, Will. Was this uh was this by chance the night before Christmas? No, <laughs> no, no. Uh. This is a Santa. Uh, and like that's what freaks me out the most because it sounded like because right. this this these walls are nothing but outside. You know, that's the only thing that's right. touching it, except for the one over here. So I'm like, all right, something's about to rip its arm through this wall and grab me in my oh, bed while man. I'm asleep. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, Oof. But it was it was spooky. But that's it. You know, that's I guess that's the equivalent to my slab. It's just my woods when it gets dark. When, when I first uh, moved to this house I'm in now, which would be probably like, I don't know, uh, probably like 10 and... 10 or 11 years ago. 50 um, years. 50 years ago. Um, I lived, used to live in Louisville, Kentucky. Essentially, we found out that we were going to move into my uh, great-grandfather's, which we called him great-grandpappy's house, uh, who had passed away recently. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's that's nice. That's I can't wait to move into a recent deceased person's house who is my family. Um, but man, like when we moved here, at first we didn't add the extensions onto our house and we got a big family. Um, we all had to stay in one room. And dude, that first time, uh, this was, I don't know, I wouldn't call it sleep paralysis, but <clears throat> me being a, my young self, I would be so scared. I would, my mind would see images. And I used to be so freaked out that I would like, <laughs> It's pretty grotesque, but I used to be so freaked out that I'd wake up in the middle of the night, and uh, like he would just be like standing over my the little staircase leaning up. And that's one thing that always freaked me out because like I never. Who is he? My granddad that that passed away. Oh God! Yeah, so like I, I had, I am not trying to scare. Get out of my house! I'm really asking this question, Redbeard. Do you have curtains behind you? No. What? Oh, oh heck. Just zoom in on Redbeard here. What are you talking about? I'm not trying to scare you. Look, I'm, he's, you're he's, not going to scare me. I'm he's not trying to. He's fuzzy for me. He's fuzzy for yeah, me. he's pretty fuzzy. So for I'm going to take a picture of the section I'm talking about. Moving. I think yeah. Yeah. There is something moving behind you. I think it's just the pixels you're seeing. No. I'm sending it to you. Okay. I mean, I, I, know what you, I see what you're seeing, but I, I really On that corner of his screen? The, yeah, the top left corner? Yeah, that's pixels, yes. bro. No, like it looks like it's like a curtain, like waving in and out. I'm hey. telling it. I just wanted to bring it up. Yeah, it's doing it hey. to me, but it's doing it for his whole screen. Oh, is it? Okay. You never know. You never know. I just wanted to bring it up. Great puppy! I'll leave it up to the viewers to decide. What do, what do you think <laughs> it is down there? Is there something back there that we can't see, or, or what is it? Ain't no tell. Will has a giant shadow person on his wall. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah, you, you're like, your whole alone. shadows. <laughs> just follows me everywhere I go. So, uh... Let me look at what you're seeing real quick. The, the other uh, instance that I had up there, by the way, I was speaking of like woods and all that. Um, I brought the friend's house. The friend that I had at the apartment came up there with me too. Okay, so that's before. weird. I'm what? sorry, but I'm sorry to cut you off, but that's. Do you see it too? Yeah. <laughs> what the? Yeah. Fuck? yeah uh -oh. I don't know what that is, man. But I legitimately see something back there, and All it's right. like, it's continually happening on my side. Like I, I watch it yeah, happen three or four times before Wait, I said anything. Let's come back to Redbeard and his ghost stories, but let's let Ben finish his slab. Yes, because <clears throat> Redbeard told slab. us some stuff. Turn the slab. Turn the slab. Especially um, when we were camping that night. Oh, see, I didn't get to hear oh, any shoot. of those. Right? Oh, just let's let Ben finish. Um. So the second time uh, we went up there was with a friend from the apartment. And this was before the guy that went up there straight up prayed a wicca prayer. And, like, 
<laughs> you know, is like, we got a moose. The same guy who was also just so happened to be a Wiccan was out there and he might have just been screwing with me. We were sitting up there and it got dark and he was like, dude, you feel that? And I'm like, no. And he's like, we got to go. And I'm like, uh oh. And so we do, we booked it. And I was like, oh, geez. And he, he might have been screwing with me, though. But, like, I mean, dude, he, he ran just as fast as I did. So, like, I don't know. I don't know. So, that it was pretty weird. But, like, I, I've always gone up there in, like, great times of, like, not so great times. So, I don't Kind know. of building that energy anyway a little bit. Yeah, yeah he's just having it like... up. So, he screws us <laughs> over when we all go out there. Hey, man. I mean, <laughs> at least... <It's> like... <laughs> He's actually just trying to kill us all. Dude, it's like I'm, I'm in a, like a werewolf costume, and I'm like, Wah! And he goes like, oh, and Will's, Will busts out his pistol and shoots me in the leg. It's, like, it's, <laughs> like, it's just like Spongebob. It was Spon- it's just like Spongebob. <laughs> no, it's for <Sparat>, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like and you guys like yank my mask off and i was like i would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you and your meddling strange corner <laughs> hey, man, so, you, you know you know what they say though i mean like at least the spirits and demonic entities feed off of negativity so like places of yep. negativity can that is moving way further than this place. if this light ever flickers it's because this air conditioner is cutting on the circulate okay. cool air just so we don't think I'm getting possessed. It's the Geek Next. Squad guy, dude. Yeah. So, real quick, before <laughs> we get into all the stories, so uh, the point of this episode, right, what we're filming right now is a precursor to us actually going out to this lab. So, mm-hmm. um, we're planning on going out, recording some, some video footage, which we will insert uh, after the fact. We haven't been out there yet, so we don't know what's going to happen. Don't know if anything will happen. Um, all we know is that this is something that um, you know, we're, we're passionate about finding out about. So we're very in, in, you know, intent on going out there and actually doing some recording and finding out, you know, oh, for no. ourselves and investigating this so that we can kind of make our own assumptions. Well, I've guys. got my trusty GoPro with think, a handle and a head strap. So think, we're prepared. I think Ben may have just found something cause his face tells the story of many <laughs> Well, I what was trying to, I was just looking up articles cause I'd found some on my phone the other day and I lost them, but I just found a ginormous book of like demons, like from A to Z, like all their names. This is like do not name them all. Is yeah, Grand Pappy in there? Yeah, I'm. I'm not gonna. Oh, what? hey, Gerald. <laughs> Gerald, you're a demon now. How's that life? Um, How's the kids, Dad? <laughs> what? So, and speaking of like woods and stuff, like let's talk about the freaking suicide forest, right, quick. Uh, in Japan, yes. um, I know everyone's heard of it. It's where that uh, Paul guy filmed the dead dude. Logan Paul, out <laughs> Logan Paul ruined the Suicide Force. <laughs> you could definitely Not ruin that it. it wasn't already tainted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a well known, well known area, man. Like, I mean, I, I personally like from all the stories and one, obviously video of a dead body that was hanging there ironically <laughs> i never watched it man you can find it online you yeah i never did it. i mean it's been re-uploaded probably it'll, 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 it'll piss you off it really i've will. watched some videos online of crazy stuff and i think i've had my fill on that for my lifetime so i i decided that i was better off probably not watching it it'll oh, take guys, you off if we could ever find a way to make it to north carolina uh, these are just some examples of haunted forests, like deep in the woods near heart and devil's tramping ground in North Carolina, <clears throat> deep in the I woods I've heard of that. near Harper's crossroads, about 10 miles east of Siler city. There's a mysterious 40 foot ring where the devil stomps around in circles each night, plotting on how to bring about the downfall of mankind or so the story goes. Even the North Carolina state department of agriculture is supposedly taking examples of the soil has yet to come up with an explanation of why the pat, the patch is devoid of growth. <sighs> you know, they Man, say the devil walks. All I can see too. us is some hick North Carolina town coming from me. With the thickest accent of, out of all of us. See, our luck, we would travel somewhere and freaking, like, actually find translate. something, like, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> oh, See, man. I can translate, yeah, you got that thing over there, that going out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, man, let that. me tell you something about them devil stomping around up in there. See? 
Yeah, we got a very own sight in Rottenham. There, 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 there. I was just gonna see if uh, Redbeard was gonna have uh, his, <laughs> had his stories ready. I've heard I've heard about them, but I've, I don't think I've heard them. Can I just give a little background? Keep in sure. mind, we're in a seven-person tent together. The only person uh-huh. who isn't in that tent with us is Lucas. Yeah. And uh, Ben and Benson. Well, Benson and Ben end up joining. Did you not get in there? I did. Benson and Ben got in there. I didn't. We almost froze to death. I, I say there's only stuff. Ben. <clears throat> uh, but right before we're about to fall asleep on Redbeard's land, he says, "You know what? I got some spooky stories for you. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away." <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think. Of, can you remind me of which? The, I, to be honest, I I kind of have a lot. So you it's told something us, that you told us why your granddad had so much land, why it was so cheap. Oh, what we yeah. were. Yeah, I forgot about that particular one being on an Indian burial ground. Uh-huh. <laughs> Says it right before yeah. we go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This, yeah, yeah, the land that we play airsoft on. And everything. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. Indian gr- burial ground land. Like one of. Told me. So. I actually have one that's kind of unrelated to that, but I just want to see if anyone else experiences this, mainly because I experience it almost every single day. So whenever I'm driving, going anywhere, um, um, say it's at night. Uh, well, I guess it has to be at night. So I'll be driving, and streetlights will randomly like just go off around me, like at least one every time that I drive home from somewhere. Like, right. a street light will turn off. And I don't know if that's just, like, pure out. coincidence, but it's it happens often enough to where I take notice of it. Like, yeah. I'll be it honest, it doesn't me. happen to me basically ever. It happens to me every happened. every single day. Every like, single happened, time I drive. It's happened before. I mean, I've got a 10-minute drive to work, so I don't really have that much, and it's basically all highway, so... I don't know. I guess have the uh, exposure to the possibility, but not really often. So, so yeah. one time I was driving home, and I have two ways to go home. One is just a pitch black path, you know, and then the other one is lit up. Well, most of the times I'll go down the one that's lit up all the time, and it's a huge like piece of like city highway, and that's just that's just how I was going yeah, about. Fun, like, it, I, I love driving down that road. But one time, all the lights were on, and out of freaking nowhere, every freaking street light like went, and I'm really? like, "Well, I'm getting abducted by aliens. This is it. <laughs> like, it's over." <laughs> I mean, but it was spooky, man. It was really weird. That is, you know, lights are supposed to be one of the ways that um, you know spirits are trying to communicate with us. Um, so there actually are several different ways that they're supposed to be able to. So this is kind of going along with us going out there tomorrow uh, i do want to bring some flashlights i know it'll probably be during the day but i'm going to bring some flashlights and uh, little on noon brings yeah. flashlights but you know they may be able to turn them on or off so uh, also i, I want to bring some type of uh, some type of recording device not just our videos but um, something we can record like static audio with to possibly trying you know capture any voices or anything uh evp stuff like that. <laughs> uh-huh. so um so testing ghost my my personal thing so i've i've done like some paranormal like investigating in the past and that's you know maybe not the the full route that we'll go with everything on this but um i very clearly remember having a, a tape recording like big boom box one of the ones you could buy that had like the two big speakers on the side i mean i'm showing my age a little bit but, yeah God, I, mean, old I, did, man. Man. I know i mean hey i'm turning 29 soon so um but I remember having one of those and recording just a blank audio tape uh, with static rolling on it uh, and on a on an FM station and like doing my own paranormal thing. And this was back when I used to film a bunch of a uh, bunch of my own videos. I had a little Sony Handycam. I was probably 13, 14 years old at the most. Uh, and I, I remember like hearing stuff in there. I don't know, I don't know if it was stuff that I wanted to hear. You know, maybe I was trying to you know hear it a little bit too much. But uh, you know, I've had stuff like that you know be beneficial so maybe taking it out there might be a good thing for tomorrow tell them about the cd the music cd oh man so it, it was a tape by the way so oh old so yeah i mean it was i mean it was 96 97 so uh maybe, maybe even before then so so to set the whole story so i've got a time, time out vincent i want you to time stamp what just happened I think Ben saw it too. All right, I'm starting to believe Lucas about Redbeard's little dude. I'm telling you, twelve eighteen. Yeah, 
12, 18. What happened this time? What? I'm telling you, Redbeard, there is something behind you. You'll, you'll have to just look on his screen, and it looked like something came over. I, I oh, 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 I didn't see that. Oh, that wasn't what you meant right then? I was just trying to talk. <laughs> well, look, okay, guys, like, I, I attract, like, ghosts and stuff. Like, all of the land that I've ever lived on has been you. haunted. Like, it's all been Indian burial ground land. In fact, you at some like point, ghosts, what I think me. would be really cool would be if we... If we out. Oh, that, but I was going to say if I got my, uh, my granddad's permission and we went over to his house and recorded in his house, because that's when, where all of the... The really heavy spiritual stuff like took place and that was the top of the mound and on top of that um so whenever i would like i lived there for a short amount of time and it was probably like the most uneasy place that i've ever lived in by a very significant margin um this is a place where like i I remember specifically i had an alarm it, it like from the movies i had an alarm clock and it like would randomly go off and i would take it and i would like unplug it from the wall and it would still be going off and one day i just took and i just broke it because i would it's it's terrifying like right. doors would slam shut all the time uh knives would fall off the counter um yeah. you should you should hear some of the stories that my mom has because she actually grew up in the house and said it was horrifying because she had like a bad i think it was like a battery powered like toy dog or something like that and um every more like it would just it would go off randomly like it would just randomly start making noises mm-hmm. and it would make like it was supposed to make you know like really chirpy like dog noises but it would make like deep gruff growls <laughs> <laughs> and uh she would like take the batteries out of it and it would keep doing it this isn't something that has an alternate source of power so it's yeah. not really something where you could <laughs> take the batteries out and it should still function properly she broke it with a hammer and the entire time she was breaking it it was growling at her at least so she says i don't i don't have uh obviously i don't have experience from that but this is a place where i still like i have dreams of this place and it's like dreams of like the house and like going through the house and like going up the stairs and then finding like other sets of stairs and this like I wouldn't say descent into madness because you're ascending stairs, but it's like an ascent into madness where it steadily gets like crazier and more horrifying the more stairs and levels you go up. Mm. It's layers of fear. It's so weird. Yeah, layers of fear. But that's kind of like that. The remember grave encounters. Every time they'd open a door, it would just like either go like if there were stairs there before, there'd be a wall and they couldn't get out. It's like I think they were trapping them. Yeah, I think yeah, that's like it's... what you would call like. I mean, that's the work of a poltergeist. I think, isn't it? It's a weird place. Like, I'm definitely saying we should go over there sometime because I, I, I'm not a ghost person. Like, I, I'm not, I don't believe in ghosts, to be completely frank. And this is, like, the only stuff that has me even close to, like, skeptical about it. So, uh, I, I want to be convinced otherwise through things like this. I, yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't say I believe in ghosts because, um, I mean, I don't believe somebody dies and then they're exact figure hollow like you can see through them and go through walls it's more spirits more than it is anything like it's um an entity that was left behind i believe in demons dude demons 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 demons. like i think demons kind of appear in like two ways you either have one have ones that like well this three to me that you self-impose or that like you do I don't know, like, you know, everybody has a demon in, like, drugs or, like, drinking, you know, or the kind that, like, you wake up and it's, like, a 10-foot, like, shadow figure in your freaking corner and, like, uh uh-uh. Like, you hear about that all the time. Now, that's easily, like, dismissed now, but, like, I don't know, man. Some people flip out, you know? Uh, I just, I think those are real, man. Like, you, sometimes you can walk into an area and the whole air shifts. There was a place where me and Benson went to in Alaska, mm, uh, and a, we were square kind of, or uh, town square. I'm talking like it was sunny. It was fine. The second we stepped foot into Times Square, we were on a mission trip. The second we stepped into Times that Times Square looking thing, uh, it got cloudy. It um it got dark, didn't it? Like the yeah. Well, it, it got dark. You just 
felt it change. There was this one guy that like took his shirt off and was like, like screaming like a behemoth. Yeah, like the guy was actually so. Um, some of the leaders that we were with were trying to calm the guy down, but basically the way the place was set up is it was like um, benches sitting. It was real pretty in a way, but the ground was slanted kind of down uh, with a drain right in the middle, just to avoid flooding essentially. Um, so essentially we were all kind of just sitting around going and talking to people. Um, but this one guy, um, started to try to throw punches, uh, toward one of the, uh, adults there. But the way, yeah. like, he wasn't necessarily, like, punching, he was just flailing his arms everywhere. And it looked stupid at first. I was kind of laughing. I'm like, dude, this dude is completely high or jacked up on something. And he looked like Markiplier, too. So, like, he it did kind of really, look like Markiplier. Really yeah, yeah. Um, but he literally, he goes, um... Right in the middle where the train is, and stands there, takes his shirt off and throws it. Oh God! And out, dude, kind of looked kind of scrawny, kind of built at the same time, but he flexed like all of his muscles. He had tattoos. But I don't know if you remember him saying this, but he goes, "Where's your God now?" Just screaming and freaking throwing punches. Oh, yeah, dude, so, I'm not kidding, man. Yeah. he was literally like, I'm pretty sure, like, if that was possession. That was what it was. Either that or he was like just strung out. Bath salts. Yeah, straight up. Dude, it was not all right. He didn't have shoes either. He like, didn't look he right. either. scary. Eating you uh-uh. raw or something because he has some bath salts if it causes people to do. eat my face off. I'm, I'm yeah. curious, Bean, what's uh, what's your stance on this? So, like, everybody, like, so far three people have mentioned their kind of stance on the paranormal. I'm, I'm curious to hear everybody else's before oh, I get Are you mine. saving the best for last? I mean, I'll give mine last. Yeah, uh, I think y'all already know mine, so. Um. Well, the woods behind my first house. Oh, those were uh, creepy. But all my friends always wanted to run through them, so we did. And um, one time I came up like right behind my house, and then I ended up finding like a really old campfire set up. Yeah. Where it looked like someone had been cooking out. So. Oh, like the whole no. like. Yeah, how old, we yeah. how old are we talking? Um, it was like old. It looked real old. But like every single time I got really close to the edge of my woods, it would like freak me out. So I just never stayed close to them. I just didn't like it. And I don't know why. Mm. Um, My last house before this one, um, you randomly it would just start smelling like oatmeal. It was weird. Uh, yeah. <laughs> of all it, things. It was built oh, back. It I was swear, Grant, no. <laughs> totally a totally way that spirits communicate. I swear, it dude. Is. Yeah, smells. Dude, what if that's how like that's how spirits smelled, and that's how you knew it was just that like pee smell from nursing homes, and you're oh, just God. like, oh. So but um, at the first house, um, every so often you'd see stuff like go across in the kitchen. It was weird. And then one time my mom was just laying there and I was in the room. <laughs> and How old um, were you? this was when I was like twelve. Um, I was in the same room and she was just kinda chilling on the couch. All of a sudden she like shot back. Something like had grabbed her hair and pulled back. Oh so, my gosh. Uh, yeah. Oh. Um that's and then we ended up moving out a few years later, you know. <laughs> Went to so, the house that was built back during uh World I War Two. I think I would have moved out the day. I'd be like, all right, pack it up. Everybody in my house is very skeptical about stuff like that. That's the thing. So do you believe? Yeah, I mean, of course. Why wouldn't you? How about you, Will? You never know. Man, I mean, I'm going to shoot it straight. I agree, you know, the whole kind of demon things. Uh, But, you know, I just haven't had anything spooky happen to me. I mean, the house I'm in now, it's it's been, we built it. Uh, booga, you know, booga. Yeah. I mean, the first house I lived in, it was, you know, parents just kind of rented it, I think. You know, I was just born. We stayed in it for a year. Uh, I turned about three. I remember walking around this house when it was just framed. So three or four. I mean, you know, nothing happened. Nothing's ever really happened to me. So I'm kind of skeptic, but I don't want to push my luck. Cause, right. You know. That's how spooky stuff happens. Yeah. And, uh, I'm just going to keep an eye on... I want to I watch Redbeard's thing. I'm telling you, there's <laughs> something going on in there. 
So I think that's a good thing though. Like we've got, we've got a pretty decent mix of people that believe and people that are skeptical or people that have different varying opinions on, uh, I I know you want to like cue the crab ray music. I had to get water. (laughs) Dude, when I just chime in real quick, uh, when I was, when I had like first moved here, I used to use my mom's old, like, was it like, I think it was an HP laptop. It was old and crappy. Darn it. Um, but I used to go on the set, a website. I can't remember what it was called. It was like Ulive. Roblox. <laughs> For sure, that happened. 100%. Club Penguin? Club Penguin. Oh, rest in peace. Yeah. Wizards 101. Pirates 101, dude. Come on. Uh, but no, uh, <laughs> it was like Ulive or something. But you could, um, people had set up live webcams in quote unquote haunted houses or haunted streets. Or, oh no, I totally remember these. Yeah, I would sit there and watch for hours. Yeah, for hours. I, I like. I remember watching this guy like just sweep up. He was just a janitor. It was just like some random, <laughs> some random like business building. Like it, it would either be like their parking lot or like something in there. Like I'm just watching this guy just sweep up. It's just the middle of the night. Yeah, I totally remember doing that stuff. Yeah. So, I've got a question. Mm-hmm. Do y'all want to? He- Can we hear the cassette tape story? That's a, that's that's what that's what I've, yeah, let's do it. I've yeah. heard it, and so, it, it I haven't. <laughs> so, let me set the story. So, uh, my mom, who uh, lives away from me now, so you know she lives a couple states over. Uh, when I was a kid, she worked at a, a retail store, and she was just a cashier. She eventually became like an assistant manager to run on to become a store manager, and we eventually had to move away. Well, when she was in that process of just being like the cashier slash assistant manager, she had another coworker that she worked with. Uh, this guy's name, I, I'm not going to give any identifying details because I actually still like, I have contact with his family still don't want them to kind of be like, you know, involved. But, um, so she is, you know, working with this guy and he is in a band and they make a bunch of tapes and I think they play out here and repair about and she works with, so the main people in the story are going to be my mom, uh, her coworker named Andrea. Uh, I'm free to give her a name cause I don't have any contact with her. The guy that ends up dying and then his family. So Spoiler. the guy that ends up dying, he ends up getting hit by a drunk driver and it was a terrible accident. Um, he was with, I think he was with a girl. The girl may have survived. I'm not really for sure, but he ends up passing away. He, he dies. Um, because of this accident, they actually put some, some traffic lights up where the intersection of where he got hit was. He had a cross on the side of the road whole night. And I was a young kid when this happened. I was under 10 years old. We lived in a not so good part of town. We lived in the projects. Like we were pretty poor growing up, so we didn't have a lot of money. And this guy would always tell my mom to not go outside and take out the trash at nighttime because things like bad things that happen. Well, I'll get to that part of it in a second, but (laughs) we we're going to visit his grave. I I can't remember how long it's been since this has all happened, but we'd been having some weird occurrences when she was still working at the retail store. She was and uh, things like weird noises, like stomping noises in the attic space above where they kept their storage stuff uh, like bouncy balls bouncing out of aisles when nobody else is in the store and the store is completely shut down and closed. Uh, a chair had been placed in between where the two registers were. And my mom actually moves the chair and takes it to another location, goes back to the office, counts the money, comes back and the chair is back in that same spot. So we're, we're going to his grave after some of this stuff has happened. She kind of feels like she talked to a uh, pastor of the church we were at at the time and, um, kind of had some conversations to kind of see what could be going on. And she's he's like, well, maybe there's some, some un, either unfinished, unfinished business or there's something that you could be you know, resolving by going out there. So we make a trip out there and we're listening to his tape on the way there. Well, don't think anything of it. We go out, we visit the grave, get back in the vehicle, we're driving back. So it turns out my mom actually turns down the wrong side of the highway while we're driving back. So don't think anything of it. We have some cars honking at us and stuff. And we're just still listening to that music. And next thing we know, we had been listening to the exact same tape on the way up there, the exact oh, same song. What? You didn't You didn't tell me that y'all ended up turning on the wrong side of the highway. Yeah, yeah. So we, we, okay. we had drove down the wrong side of the highway. And it was like, I don't know if it was just somebody watching over us or what. I don't know. But um, 
we're listening to the exact same tape that we've been listening to on the way up there. Like it's not a very long tape, exact same songs. And out of nowhere, it stops. And it says, the walls hold my thoughts, but you can hear my soul. And then it starts to play the music again. Wait, it was just like a voice? Yes. And then we like freaked out. My mom stops the tape, rewinds it, and plays it again, and it doesn't say it. We checked every other tape that, that they had given out because they had made like multiple recordings. Oh, I just got chills. Oh, yeah. We, we had given out multiple, he had given out multiple recordings of this tape to Andrea, to his mom, and nobody else's tape had it. We never heard it again, but we did get like an increase of like more loud noises, stomping around at the top of the store, like more crazy things happening. So now this part didn't happen to me. I wasn't there for this, but like the whole big culmination is, you know, he, he always told my mom not to take the trash out. Well, one day it's late at night. My mom's going to take the trash out, opens up the back door. So she gets a whiff of cherry cigars. So this is where the smell thing comes in. He used to smoke cherry cigars, goes to open the door. She says she sees him and she just turns around shuts the door, puts the trash down, and apparently something had happened to somebody out by the trash can that night. Like, we found out about the next morning, so if she went out, there's a possibility that she could have been involved. Mm. Ooh. So, I don't know. So, uh, just, just, yeah. Um, but the whole, like... So did his spirit save her, or did the spirit do this, like, the clobbering? <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming it was uh, more of a protective thing because he was a very protective guy. Um, you know, he, he was a, always a good guy, and I, I remember even being a kid and, and like being around him, and he was he always seemed you know fun to be around. So, mm-hmm. like um, a big brother, kind of. Yeah, I mean, I have an older brother, but uh, uh, like an older brother to my older brother, you know. Dude, Whoops. like, so I didn't tell you all this, but my house was built where a guy was, um, like he was alive, and we laid the cement on top of him. Um, whoa, I'm whoa. Kidding, but... I was <laughs> like, when, when did this <laughs> over the Luke, years of being friends with you, you've never told heck. me that? Um, it, it's weird how that happens. Uh, you know, my buddy that I said like went up there and he like prayed a wicca prayer and all that, he uh committed suicide uh, a while ago, and I'm not gonna say his name. But he he should have died. And a year after he died, um, this is weird, too. Uh, So when I turned 18 uh, at the college I was at, it kind of sucked. And for the next four years till now, uh, I literally saw this. I started seeing this all the time because of this. Um, So my friend died. And a year later, during September, when his birthday is, uh, I went over to his house and we released lanterns um for him and we wrote kind things on there and then they she uh um his mom read this poem about the dragonfly and um talking about how in a village of water beetles they all played and had fun there was this beanstalk in the middle of the little like water beetle village and like it went up out of the water well, one water beetle decided to go up all the way and out of the water. So he goes out of the water and transforms into a beautiful dragonfly. But problem is he could not get back to his friends or he drowned. So he couldn't say anything. Um, and his water beetle friends never knew he went. Um, so ironically, after that, I'm talking like next couple days after this, I see dragonflies wherever I go. And yep. it still happens. I notice them all the time. And I looked it up and it turns out they're supposed to represent self-realization. And in the past four years, I've been having some horrible self-realization, let me tell you. And it's just, I see them everywhere I go. And it's like, wow, are these things guiding me? Like, what's what's going on, you know? And I never knew if it was just coincidence or I just noticed them because I was made aware of them, you know? Right. But it was just significant, you know, and weird. And it's Well, I had strange. a dragon... I had a dragonfly yeah. in my garage last night. Are you supposed to be in my garage? Right. You know, do, do I need engine problems? <laughs> what if I was like, hold on, and I like left the screen for Help two me, seconds? Man. 
And then I just opened your door right there. I was like, Ooh, hey. hey, bro. <laughs> I flew here on my dragonfly minion. <laughs> no, but like, and it was weird. It'd be weird because I would drive like down the road and this same dragonfly would be flying with my car all the time. And it was really strange. It's like, it would so follow weird. me. And so I, that's why, like, I don't know, man. It just, it feels like it was just, and every time I looked at it, I was like, is that you, man? <laughs> like, you know? Like, yeah. What are you trying to tell me? And we would always have these huge life conversations, like, no matter if we were, like, under the influence, you know, but, like, we'd have these huge life conversations, you know, and it was just too ironic, the fact that those represent what they do, and that I started seeing them, and that was the poem she read, you know? No, really man, I, I think that stuff like that happens, um, you know? Like, mm -hmm. my aunt passed away in 2015, and... Um, yeah or sorry 2016 or 17 I, I, i'd have to remember uh, a little bit harder but um every time like i would be out and about after that i always found dimes on the ground and i don't know oh. why but like it's just weird but i would find dimes like everywhere um mm. and it only started like after that so you know stuff like that it might happen and try try me back to i remember ben was saying um he said that your place had burned down I think that's one thing I've always been curious of as far as like spirits sticking around, you know, shows like Supernatural or movies basically saying, you know, that person was either tied to a belonging or maybe a lock of hair stuck around. Uh, I think that's one thing like what necessarily causes an entity to stick around, you know? Glue. Ooh. <laughs> okay, glue. I just, <laughs> adhesive, I, I supernatural just remembered adhesive. something that while it didn't inherently happen to me, got a cousin she's a methodist preacher uh you know one of the few that lets women preach uh is the methodist religion i mean not big different than you know normal christianity but you get what i'm saying just yeah. for backstory she used to be in a town i gotta phrase this correctly as to not dox her uh and it was civil war just tore it up I'll tell you guys in a minute which town it was. Uh, but her church was built that she was at. She's not at that one anymore. She's actually closer to home. Uh, it was built during the Civil War, and they used it as like a field hospital. Uh, but now, you know, of course, they've got new stuff. So, but the original sanctuary field hospital, that's what it was. Uh, and she said... Keep in mind, she's giving me a tour of it because we went and ate lunch one day. So we're taking this tour of her church. And uh, keep in mind, we're we're walking in the sanctuary hall. She's like, yeah, this is the haunted place, by the way. And I'm you know, looking around. I was like, hold up, what? She's like, yeah, people that kind of stay by themselves, they say they get kind of tugged on on their shirts and got stuff knocked out of their hands and like all the decorative pieces get slapped over sometimes. Right. It's like, I was like, thanks cuz for telling me this as we're walking around. And I was like, so, uh, you know, you're a preacher. What, you know, what, why are they here? And she says, she sits there for a second. We're eating lunch. She's like, well, if I had to guess, it would be from all the blood stains that never got up. Cause you know, bleach didn't exist in the civil war. I was like, Something tying them there? I was like, what do you mean? She's like, well, I mean, you know, they, they didn't get cleaned up. You know, that that's they're stuck here. Some, a part of them stuck here. And, I mean, that kind of stuck with me, but I'm still kind of skeptical. You know, I didn't have any church spirit drag me or anything. Right. Yeah. Like some of her other church spirit workers. Jesus, like, grab you and go like, ah, boy, come here, we're going to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and like, I mean, we're going we'd look... back to heaven. <laughs> That's it. I mean, nothing crazy happened to me. Even she was like, I've seen some spooky stuff happen. And I was like, it's good I, to know. I ironically had another person kill themselves. It wasn't someone I was close to, though. But I worked at an academy sports and outdoors, and they like they like he started, and I forget his name now. He started at uh, the weirdest time. It was I think close to holiday season, and he didn't speak. Like he barely talked. He looked like Patrick Swayze. Uh, he was Patrick he Swayze. never talked. Um, and out of nowhere, 
uh, everybody was like super solemn one day and I was like, what's, what's going on with everybody? Well, we're sitting at a meeting, uh, at the end of the night, uh, cause we all got together to talk and talk about how the day went. And, uh, they go, well, guys, uh, so and so killed themselves. Um, so, you know, we didn't want to say anything, uh, but his dad called the store today and they found him hanging in a tree oh, wow. and yeah. And I was like, wow like it's it was so surreal the fact that he wasn't there anymore you know it, it, and he was there for such a short time you know um but he worked in footwear and anytime you walked into footwear after that it didn't feel super right um not saying that there was like a spirit there because like i mean obviously it'd be more like where he died you know um or close to where he died uh he resented his father a lot uh, but anytime you'd step into footwear, there'd just be this uneasiness, you know, it'd be like, you, I'm in footwear, you know, and to this day, like, I don't work there anymore. When I walk into footwear, I instantly start thinking about him. Yeah. Like, it's really weird, you know, like, that's like, oh, that dude died right here. It was very significant. And it's like, oh, my gosh, you know, <laughs> it was like, yikes. So uh, I don't know. I know stuff like that's weird. So I think that really ties in well, like you know, now, but, um, you know, having that thought process of, you know, like him every time you walk in there and how, you know, Will, you just mentioned it with the bloodstains, like things kind of get tied to mm -hmm. a thing or a place. Uh, and, you know, that's kind of, I think, what we're really hoping to find out with this whole slab. Like mm -hmm. there's a huge possibility of, you know, something being tied to either that, that home, that land, that area. Um, you know, there's a, a huge stigma around, you know, Indian burial grounds or just in any type of catastrophic area like that in general, um, you know, holding on to that presence. And I think that uh, it's a phenomenal way to transition into the, the video side of the rest of this podcast. And hopefully, um, you know, we find a lot of really neat things out there, really good information. And, uh, you know, who knows, maybe we catch... Uh, the flying Get ghost just a little, little so, goblin a ghosty so, a ghoul uh just to preface this before we get into the video portion we are going to be doing this at daytime um maybe I some night eventually too maybe some night uh i don't personally feel comfortable going up there without a full crew uh personally um so let me tell you uh to preface this again there's two areas we're going to visit one is this huge white like powdered area that had a ton of toys and like random crap just all up in it that's the um, spot i'm really interested to find mm -hmm. and there were toys like slab, it yeah. was really weird um now, is that now, beside the slab or is that not so in relation a, with the slab this is in the same area now we're all going to need to stay together in groups of three i think three or two uh, we can send one team out to the powder and then one out to the thing. We should all do it together. Um, I mean, maybe. Nah, yeah, dog. I mean, we all go in together. Yeah, yeah everybody's yeah, sticking yeah, together. That, that's all right, gang. Let's do. split up. Yeah. Right. All right. I'll take the, the two hot ladies with me. <laughs> I'll take the dog. <laughs> but no. Okay, for real, though. So just to preface, preface this one more time, for about 10 years of my life, I went up there and dumped all kinds of negativity into that area. Boy. Thanks. Thanks, yeah, man. straight up. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and I, I like I had a really bad thing happen, and I buried everything relating to a certain person at, in this place. Oh I, gosh. Yeah, it's gone. It's all gone now. But one time I came back, and it was dug up. You know, somebody <laughs> dug it up. Uh, oh, wow. It was really scary. I was like, yikes! That's. Not I mean, good. let's think rationally um, about that. They saw that someone had dug something. Like, ooh, I yeah. wonder if someone like buried some treasure. Yeah. So yeah. They're like, oh no, nah, never mind. What if they like figured out that's like I, where I live because of that, and they're like sort of harassing me or something? That'd be scary. But, but no. Um. So my thinking is like I dumped a lot of negativity in there. Maybe there's something there. It's really weird because for about three years I didn't go up there. Like this last little bit was the first time I got up there, and I had also just had something horrible happen. And my first instinct was to get what I was going to do up there and go up there that was like i'm heading that way you know well i take that back it'd been about a few months leading up to this but i it was during the same thing that caused that time to go up there so everything is just i don't know it, it's just it it draws you in it's really okay. weird 
I do so. have one hypothesis to propose. Oh, Lord. You said... Hypothesis. This, is, this not might be verbatim from you, but you said you found, like, beer bottles, even condoms up there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if you're feeling all the spooky energy, I, I just want to know what all these other kids that are, you know, drinking and smoking substances and apparently busting out rubbers. I want to, I want to know what kind of vibe they're on. Adrenaline. Adrenaline. Satan vibe. Because, <laughs> you know, they're, That's they're on the same. They've, maybe they've g- <laughs> maybe they've given <laughs> off enough good vibes to outweigh your just bad vibes that you've trashed. They probably have you. a spooky kink. Yeah, yeah. I think, I, I still think Ben's just setting us up to murder us, you know. Uh, I feel like I feel like we're all gonna get up there and like we're gonna do the little uh, uh, EVP thing. Is it, yeah, EVP. Like, yeah, just be like in the back of no, the room. We're gonna be we're gonna be listening and we're gonna be like, is there anybody here? And all we hear in the background is, Ben, you're here. Thank God, we're so hungry. Give me some of that negative <laughs> there. Um, no, 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 hey, the, the demon's walking up like, "Hey, there's my boy." <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna say, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say, we take this to the slab now. All right, All right. boys, let's do it. All right. Not with that. While getting Who can hula hoop? You're the only one skinny enough to put it on. I just like slicing in the... <laughs> That's a good idea for like a salt trap. Um, what happened? This is a sacrificial ant turd mound. We crowned it ours. <laughs> we found, we found the, uh, the ritual. He's actually climbing. Found a red beard in this natural habitat. This is where he lives in the trees, in the middle of the woods. He spotted me. Whoa. There used to be, so there used to be a body of water. It had to. Yeah. Yeah, it's literally just moth shells. Yeah. I think the weirdest thing is these were like clams. Very old. You can see the aging in them. Mm. But it has fresh four-wheeler tracks right here. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say that trail we just walked through was made. They've never done anything with this one. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. What is this? Shell. What are these? Just a bunch of shells, man. Check this out, man. It's like a bunch of, uh. Holy crap. <laughs> That's literally all it is. It's just a ton of grills. Honestly, though, this one actually, other than like the rust, looks like it's in fine shape. But it's a spray paint can of sorts. I don't think this tire is. I'm not gonna lie, that tire looks almost brand new. Almost brand new. I am getting a little bit of a weird feeling now yeah. that we're out here. It's no, 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 no. Like, for real, I heard something like that. Like, it's landed on the 
same sound. Well, if you know what that means in order logic, let's walk towards it. Now be careful, there is a field over there. Like, uh, that's like what people uh, bring the funerals with flowers on. Yeah, yeah. Those are, those are like flower posts. Yeah. What? Because that's literally what people put flowers on. Yeah, yeah this is like a funeral. Yep. Trunk. It doesn't have a bottom in it. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, bottoms out. There's a brick That was a cool box once upon a time. I have one beyond repair. So Ben, give us a little bit of the lore out here. Well, again, I came out to this part a lot when I was littler and like 12 or so. And it was always so weird coming back here by myself too. I got lost back here one time for about three hours because I couldn't figure out how to, and I was really about to pass out from dehydration. I just started walking that way. I wound up finding the way out uh, just because it's so easy to get lost back here. Um, but it always weirded me out coming back here and looking through everything. There'd always be new stuff here. Uh, you just, it doesn't make sense why this is the way it is why they would hold on to a piece of land like this you know the atmosphere back here is significantly different i feel it is than... like it just doesn't feel did you guys hear that it's not like a dump truck like oh yeah i mean they're probably working yeah. there. now sometimes yeah. i would see lights kind of falling from the sky back here uh like i'm talking like you'd look up and you'd see something like an orange drop going like straight down 30 out six uh Get that southern 50 grain <laughs> registered redneck at your service so what are you guys smelling right now Nothing decaying there. animal it just it smells like death it's weird because it wasn't like this before yeah and that building wasn't creaking a while ago and now it's just creaking off. it Why smells like death creaking? probably because we knocked some stuff loose okay out. all right you, uh, i said you stopped it before i perform an exorcism all of a sudden i just heard a <laughs> Lucas, you pushing your luck. Hey, throw something at it. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> oh, there's an animal right here. What you got? What is it? I don't know. That's a crow! Holy s***! <laughs> Back the f*** up! Oh, that sucks. That's a f***ing crow! Dude. That is a crow. That's not a crow. Sure? No, that's a crow. That's a crow. It's that hissing at us. Guys, uh, um, crow. Get out, man. It's under the chair if you want to get a better look. See it? Yeah, I got it on camera. Ooh, careful, dude. Hey, there's legit something. I'm a little heavy to walk on that, so you guys go ahead. <laughs> Bro, it's getting loud. There. Yeah, that, that crackling's getting pretty loud. I don't think you should stand on that. It looked like it was about to give way. Man, this creaking's getting me like freaked out. Hey, hey, guys. Hey, guys. The crack crackling's getting nuts. So, one thing we're noticing is the crackling in this nice little shed we just visited. Oh my gosh. Listen, listen. I hear something moving. Alright, well, y'all come on. Yeah, there is something moving there. Y'all making something. Alright, well, that's good. Yeah. Hold on. Why did the main house burn? And where'd all the cows go? Feels like you're talking to a child. <laughs> I think it's just old. Or not. 
Yeah. Take one side. I want to ride the bicycle. Oops, sorry, there's a crotch. Let me get through the spider web. Guys? Yeah? Uh. It's just a chain that I always sell at Hey Bill. So. Oh, crap. That was a dump truck or something. That was a different one. about smells last night so when we were walking near that blue place the smell got really intense and the creaking in the barn got really loud and then we walked back over and we kept asking it questions and it dropped a nail like directly next to next to red beer and lucas uh so uh, what did you guys feel I, I that was my first time going back there and i feel weird you know this is like a safer place to me like this right here but it's still off you know like just how this is like messed up and then you got all this cleanliness over here the gate being broke it was weird i'll also say when we got to the uh the shed for the first time it wasn't creaking it wasn't creaking until we had first actually gone past it to that blue house so probably take something off a little bit i i don't know to be honest I don't feel anything negative about it. But when y'all were around that corner messing stuff, the, uh, the barn, it was pretty pretty creepy. It was getting pretty lit. Not pretty a good way. I definitely felt weird back there. Yeah. I, I didn't want to go that far back. All right, so it's four strange, two skip. So, All right, strange. Um, so thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, this was a piece of my childhood. Uh, I hope this marks the beginning of a really cool thing we got going i hope you enjoyed us talking um the last night during the podcast um thank you for watching this portion as well uh we don't believe in goodbyes so Where's Redbeard?